All right, William, let me ask you another question about your your team. When you have uh, people coming to you and they ask you, boss, how do I find buyers? How would you coach them? Okay, everybody come in the real estate without any leads. Same as me, I was from warehousing. I got no leads. So you must, firstly, I think you must have a business mindset, entrepreneurship mindset. Mm, yep. Must must be very resourceful and must maybe reach out. I think the first leads, the easiest leads is warm leads. Is warm leads. Of course, uh, what I mean by warm leads? Um, recently, I have an agent who joined me. He was formerly from a car leasing company. So the moment he got CA license, he sent me a draft he want to send to his client. So I modified his, his, his draft. And he got two leads. He just joined me. Three days. Two leads. That's very encouraging. Hmm. Yeah, various methods. I have one very typical st- incident. One of my agent, he, he posted on Facebook. And somehow his o- her old friend come to know he's a property agent. So told her that my mother's, my parents' house in Tampines wanted to rent HDB. And she stayed in Yisun. Mm. Obviously she take up. And she received a call. Actually it's not a tenant. It's a potential buyer. I believe this lady called many agents. So she asked her, you have many listings in Tampines? She should have one. You know, mm. agents have ways to answer. Mm. You are GTA in Tampines? GTA means gra- geographical target area. She should she stay in Yisun. Obviously, we have a way to answer. Nevertheless, they arranged to meet up. And m- miraculously, she said she want to buy treasure. Mm. Specifically treasure. Because her parents around stay around there she closed the deal then this lady told her because of a good service told her that my brother looking for a house <coughs> so we went to see she wanted to buy executive apartment so we went to see two units in fact I came along this is the way I support my people especially mm. new. I follow them how far where is Changi Tampines I go and uh this this couple, actually their IPA in principle approval has 1.8 million. So I asked them, why are you gonna buy executive apartment? Oh, the girl said, girlfriend said, oh, I live in a big house all my life since birth. I want space. I say, look at the trend of HDB. I don't mean HDB is no good. The trend, the upside. Today you buy several thousand. Do you think can sell one million? On the other hand, if you use this money, you cost it one point eight million. You you can only just one point eight million IPA. You can buy one million one point five. Depend on what property you buy. The upside is better. And uh, in fact, we went to see two units of executive apartment. One in Tampines. The price is high. One in Topayu, near the girlfriend house. The price is low, but I have to spend hundred thousand renovation. So I told you, told them, if you buy a one million condo, it's as good as spend another thousand. You have a saving of hundred thousand. Still not very convinced. Then I told them my life journey. I said, do you know I started HDB in those days thirty over years ago? My HDB is only twenty five thousand. Today the same HDB at Amokyo, block four six seven, about three five oh thousand. Twenty five to three five oh is a lot of money, right? But then along the way, I changed to landed house. I bought, I stayed in landed house. I changed a few times. My last landed house I sold for two million. So you see, two twenty five thousand to two million or twenty five thousand to three five oh, which are the better? You see the 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 the, the vast difference. Then I have a childhood friend who first property already a HD a, a private condo, five hundred K. He changed many how many condos along the way. The last condo was M block, mm. four million. Wow. He will never know. Jackpot. That's why I told him we need a house to stay. So why not a house that can give upside? He wants space 
or you want money. Obviously, everybody mm. prefer money. Of course, money is not solution to everything, but it's good to have. Um, along the way, there's a so-called consumer talk. You know, our consumer talk mm. is so powerful. So we brought to them to the treasure that's consumer what, that's talk. That's what Kelvin Fong and the I can't remember who, who, do who was quick. doing the consumer it's talk. It's quite regular. It's about every couple. Very of regular every is Kelvin, every uh, week there's Kelvin one Fong. Talk. You know, last year we had 100, 100 over consumer talk, which translate to about eight a month, which is about two a week. Mm. I tell you, I dare say no any Asian agency has so, so many consumer talk. I yes. I, I look at it and so much work that's been put into it as well. Yeah. Yes. At the end of the day, the company made money. But the important thing is the company really wants the agent to have income. Mm. You can see we have the slides to show you every project we are leading the way. We are leading the way. And uh, I just heard that um, just we just have a team leaders meeting. Last year, they have a half billion, b- billion yep. transaction. The record. Product next record. It's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So consumer talk is really um, a way. It, consumer talk is not telling you to buy property. It's telling you the market movement, the direc- direction, where is a sh- short supply, where is the population, how to fit in, where is the right time to come in, and things like that. Not... Well, it's a bunch. It's a lot of information to explain yes, to yes, yeah. the generation, and people are already on Google and they're searching yeah. for it. So we yeah. just make it more yeah. palatable and yeah. easy to digest. Yeah, agents can do a lot of convincing, but those data are really from URA mm. data, not some data we just compile. Yeah. It's from URA data. They are genuine data. All the past ten year cycle, the certain area. Not every property can buy. Not every area can buy. Certain areas are higher upside. You know, things yeah. like that. And also whether to buy a free hole or to buy a lease hole, I think not necessary. you know, some people say prefer buy a free hole, but every property has upside, whether it's free hole or lease hole. Yeah. I, I tell my clients to, to go to the consumer seminar and after they've been to one or two, I tell them you're probably smarter than me. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, those are real data. It's not something that, mm, yeah, very convincing. I remember there's one data from Kevin Fong. In uh, he mentioned about in um, 19, 1960 something, the population was two three million. The PSF was eight hundred five hundred. Today was the population was the PSF. So the population growth has relation to PSF. That is really a true yeah. figure. So can you imagine one day we are six point nine million or even now talk now even target ten million. It's not far from can now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? No what the PSF Maybe about 10 years time then I also tell them I also tell them you know government land bids uh, is always highest than previous land it's nothing wrong with the government because they also study the market they also have a value in every land if you bid too low they will continue to hold and also every building needs material B- material needs manpower manpower means salary Today the salary can be two thousand. In ten years' time, you mean the worker salary is still two thousand? So obviously mm. that's increased. Yep. When that's increased, material costs will go up. So there are three elements: GDP goes up, material costs go up. Labor. Land, uh, labor is material cost, and uh, land cost, land bidding price go up, land sales. So, I mean, Singapore is not very big, uh, so. How much space can you squeeze? You can build tall buildings, but the land cost will go up. Right. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. You're, you've been uh, building a team for quite a while now. What does it take to be a good manager? I think you must be passionate, must be able to uh, connect with them more often. And I think I my my. St- I would say my strongest point is I'm able to respond rather quickly because fortunately I'm not in the sales. Of course, those sales people, they have their way to respond. Yeah, Not, not that they are no good. They are different way of responding. They can be fast as well. Hmm. Yeah, depend on the timing. But for them, for me, I got feedback from my people. Sometimes they message me at midnight. Yep. If I'm awake, I, re- I respond. I even call them. 
Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when a, when an agent needs help, they need help. They really they need help. help. Can you imagine? And if they call you at midnight, it must be pretty urgent. Pretty urgent. I remember there's one case. Uh, this new agent, he has uh, o- he prepared OTP. The property is one million. The one percent supposed to be ten thousand. You know, he wrote OTP and sent to me. I look at OTP. The one percent. You know how much he wrote? Hundred dollars. <laughs> he wrote one million. <laughs> So I say, no, you fully paid. <laughs> That's gonna be hard to explain. Yeah, then he said, oh shit! Lucky that I respond fast. It's a legal case, no? Yeah. Can you imagine? Fixed. Yeah. That was it some time back. Yeah, it was some time back. But uh, there was a happy ending at the end. Of course, he that the OTB chain to, but uh, the customer was sitting in the in the living. He said, I got urgent. Actually, go kitchen. He messaged me. Yeah. All right, so he sorted out. He, he corrected the OTP corrected in time. Corrected yeah, straight away, and yeah. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, so there are many cases where I have um, with them. Uh, they are 